Many years ago, I um, worked in the uh, New York City public schools, um, and I was given originally a temporary teaching certificate, and in order to continue that temporary teaching certificate, um, I had to take um, an education class every summer. So um, over the course of those summers, I took two education classes, but that's the extent of my training as a teacher. My own background is um, I graduated from college and then I worked for about three years or so and then I went to graduate school and I have my master's in education um, and that was uh, about seven or eight years ago when I got my master's. In that time I did a lot of teaching but I did a lot of uh, English language teaching. Um, it wasn't really what I was trained for, but that's just kind of what I ended up doing. I um, got an undergraduate degree in language and culture and then decided to um, get a Master of Arts in Education. And uh, at the same time I did that program, I got certified to be able to teach, but I never taught in a traditional school. And I, I had... Um, I did teach in a public school for four years before I um, came to Fairhaven and I, um, uh, it was an, an inner city type school, um, high school, I was teaching American history and women's issues, kind of gender issues. Um, and I had, had gone to school, um, as an undergraduate I, I developed my own major at a sort of Altern in an alternative program uh, called Sociocultural Development and Education. And I was looking at how kids from different cultural backgrounds um, are affected by a school system that's really designed for white middle class children. And then I did a master's degree that got me a certification to teach. And then I also have a master's degree in American history. Would you work for a traditional school as a teacher? Well, I did actually uh, worked for two years in a public high school in New York City. Um, I don't think I could do it anymore. Um, I was better at pretending then and you know uh, doing things that I didn't necessarily agree with um, and at that time in my life it, it worked out well for that but um, part of the reason I left was because it was becoming clear to me that um, I really couldn't continue to do that. You have to think about your own education first. Even before you think about anybody else's education, you have to think about what education means for you yourself first. If you're not willing to do that for yourself, then it's going to be very difficult for you to want to be a part of a democratic school. I would say as a staff member, the most uh, important thing that I have learned is that um, you need to be very open-minded about education. You need to, and you need to ask basic, uh, fundamental questions about education. You know, what is a school? Uh, do kids have to go to school, to a physical school building, to learn? Uh, what does it mean to learn? You know, uh, you really have to expand your ideas about what learning uh, constitutes. So, would you say that you have changed your attitude? towards education when you became a staff member at Sudbury Valley School? I think so. I mean, I wouldn't say I changed it radically because I would have said at the beginning that I was already, um, that my ideas about education were very much in line with uh, the philosophy at Sudbury Valley. But at the same time, I had to come to understand fairly quickly um, some areas where, where I was taking for granted certain things. Um, you know, especially coming from, uh, first of all, a traditional um, education and then the next step from a um, from a role as a teacher where I was really trying to figure out the best way to transmit information you know and to make it interesting and uh, and relevant and, uh, and entertaining um, that I had to realize how that was really a product of a particular outlook on um, on the way that people educate themselves or become educated and uh, and to realize it was one that wasn't, didn't really have a major place um, within the Sudbury Valley model. If you only learn math and English uh, or your native language uh, and science and uh, social studies, is that learning? 
in the United States, most people would say that that is learning or that's basic learning. Um, and so, but when you start working at a Sudbury Valley School, you really have to uh, rethink your ideas and really think about what is basic learning. Um, and also you have to be willing to ask that question for yourself. If you're not willing to ask that question for yourself, then um, to go and, you know, say work at a democratic school or to even go and observe at a, a democratic school in action, it's going to be very difficult for you individually. So would you say that staff members at the, at the Sudbury school learn themselves? Oh, certainly. Um, to me, well, um, I, I suppose I have to admit that to me the, the biggest attraction to working at the school is that um, it affords me an opportunity to learn all the time. That uh, in some ways there's no better, um, no better opportunity to get to know a lot of people and to um, engage with real life problems in company and association and sometimes opposition with with uh, a large group of people that I know um, I feel like there's no better place to learn about human life than uh, than Sudbury Valley that I found mm -hmm. and to me that's uh, I, that's part of what makes it uh, fun for me to come to work every day <laughs>